Welcome to Broadway Church Online. My name is Cheryl, and you have joined us for week three, the final week of our sermon series, Getting Healed. Pastor Darren will be sharing a message from God's Word a little bit later, but before we continue, I would love for you to share this video, as it really does help to spread what God is doing here at Broadway Church. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, we encourage you to do this now, and you'll always be in the loop with all that is going on here at Broadway. Now, if you happen to miss last week's message, Pastor Simon shared on two essential ingredients for healing. Check out this clip. Let me just do my best to define what forgiveness really is, because perhaps as you're watching this, we just have different definitions of what forgiveness really is and what it's not. Forgiveness is not letting that person back into your life. Forgiveness is, is not being friends with that person again. Forgiveness is not pretending like that hurt wasn't caused. Forgiveness, it doesn't happen when they say they're sorry. Forgiveness doesn't happen when they acknowledge their faults. Forgiveness doesn't happen when they make things right because those things may never happen. You see, forgiveness is not about, uh, about setting them free. Forgiveness is about you setting yourself free. In fact, forgiveness isn't even really about them. It, it's about you. Hear me, forgiveness is about you allowing yourself to be set free from the prison of hurt and brokenness and bitterness that you find yourself in. Forgiveness is about you releasing that person back to God's justice. Forgiveness is about you committing to not speak ill of that person anymore. See, forgiveness is it's not about your feelings. Forgiveness is an act of the will. Forgiveness is about you disciplining your feelings, disciplining your words, disciplining your actions to not bring into the present what was left in the past. Now, if you want to hear the full message, you can go to our website where we have the entire sermon available for you. Now, today is Celebrate Sunday, and as a church, we celebrate communion and baptism. So now is the time to gather your elements, some crackers and some juice, and immediately after the sermon, one of our pastors will be leading us in a time of communion. In just a few moments, the worship team is going to come and lead us in a time of worship. But before that happens, why don't you check out some of the things coming up at Broadway? Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Desiree and I'm one of the pastors here. And as you guys can see, I have a very special guest with me. So why don't you go ahead and tell us who you are and what you do around here? Yeah, my name is Tyrone uh, and I am the youth pastor here at Broadway in Vancouver. Amazing. Well, we have a ton of stuff happening here at Broadway for you and your families. So why don't you check these things out? Monday, September 30th is the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. On this day, we encourage everyone to pray for the Indigenous communities across our land, for truth to be seen by the light of God's love, and for healing to be experienced by the power of God's grace. We have our Young Adult Kickoff happening at the Vancouver campus this Thursday at 7 p.m. If you're ages 18 to 35, you are invited. We have intentional small groups for each age, including a new young married small group. We also have regular young adult small groups at our Port Coquitlam and Surrey campuses on the second and the fourth Fridays of the month at our Poco campus, and you are invited. We have a Parents with Children Stay and Play group happening at both our Vancouver and Port Coquitlam campuses on Thursday mornings. In Poco, it happens from 10 to 11 a.m. And in Vancouver, it happens from 10 to noon. You are invited. Club Freedom Tri-Cities is looking for volunteers. Each Sunday, we serve a hot meal and bring a message of hope to those in need in the Tri-Cities community. There are a variety of ways to serve, so if you're interested, please email the address below or sign up on the City Reach website. Hey Surrey Campus, join us as we head to the Rondrizo Farm and Pumpkin Patch on October 6th from 1.30 onwards. There will be cows, chickens, and pumpkins to pick. To register, go please visit our website. If you missed anything that we said, you can always visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on all of our ministries and events. 
And while you're there, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Now it's almost time for us to worship, but first I want to read you a short passage to prepare our hearts for what God wants to do in this moment. Isaiah 25 verse one. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things planned long ago. This verse reminds us of God's unwavering faithfulness. Isaiah praises God for his perfect plan fulfilled through his wonderful works. Even when we can't fully see or understand what God is doing, we are called to trust that His plans are always for our good. As we reflect on this, we are encouraged to praise God, not just for the blessings we've received, but for His faithfulness in all circumstances. So as we head into a time of worship, just as Isaiah recognized God's perfect plan long ago, we can trust that He's working out good in our lives today, even when the path ahead seems unclear. Broadway family, welcome to church. It is the best time of the week. It's time to praise Jesus. So let's all stand and sing together. Come on. God, I know that what you promise will be better than I thought. You will feel
Lord, we do that very thing in this place today. We lift our lives before you. We lift our hands before you. We bow our lives before you. 
So as each of us comes into this place today with our own sense of failure, our own fears, our own frustrations, our own victories, our own hopes, our own dreams, each of us brings into this auditorium right now a unique perspective on you and on life, our own histories, our own hopes, and we lay them all down before you right now. And Lord, in the midst of our confusion, in the midst of our celebration, in the midst of our plans and our aspirations and all of this, we declare right now that we trust you. We trust you. Though we don't understand everything that's happened, we don't understand everything that you allow, we don't understand everything that you're doing, we know that you love us with the purest love imaginable. And we declare and we affirm that we trust you. So we lay our lives before you and we exalt you and worship you for who you are and for what you promise and for what you determine you will do. So thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your presence in our lives. And we pray all this in the mighty, the powerful, the resurrected name of Jesus. And everyone agreed with me and said, amen. God bless you. May be seen. Welcome to Broadway Church. And thank you, worship team, for leading us in worship today. Now, if you're new to Broadway Church, we would love for you to fill out our digital in-touch card. Just scan the QR code on the screen and fill out the form. A pastor will get back to you and help you find answers to your questions about growing in your faith or connecting here at Broadway. You've joined us on what we like to call Celebrate Sunday, and today we celebrate communion and baptisms. If you have made the decision to follow Jesus and are considering taking that next step to be baptized in water, visit bway.ca slash baptism for all the information that you need. Now don't forget to get your elements ready as we will be partaking in communion right after the sermon. We are now going to transition into our time of giving. If you're new to Broadway Church, please feel under no obligation to give. You do not have to pay to watch or attend church. However, if you would like to financially support what God is doing here at Broadway, we would love for you to do that now. Our preferred way of giving is for you to go to the Give tab on our website and check out the online banking giving option. We can accept your credit card over the phone if you call into the church office. You can come in in person from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. during the week if you'd like to drop it off. You can also use text to give. If you text the word give to the number on the screen, it will walk you through the prompts to get that set up. Or you can mail in your checks to the church. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Pastor Darren will be sharing a message with us in just a moment. But first, why don't you take a moment to subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with what's happening here at Broadway. And you still have time to share this video as it really does help us reach many more people and share the good news of Jesus. Now, we'd like to share a quick video from our Celebrate Recovery Ministry to show you what's coming up next. Check out this video to see what we're up to. What have I gotten myself into? That did not go as planned. Now, how do I get myself out of here? <clears throat> No. Ah. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. <laughs> hey, buddy, you good? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Got everything under control. I got myself into this mess. I need to get myself out. I got this. <sighs> you sure you don't need any help? Nope. No, I'm happy where I'm at. Don't worry about me. I can't get help. It's so embarrassing. I want to be seen as a weakling my whole life. I'm a capable adult. I'll do this myself. Oh, he's in there pretty deep. One time I was stuck like that, but my friends helped get me out. He says he's good. You sure you're okay, buddy? Yeah, I'm good. I just need to stay here for a bit. I'll get out when I'm ready. Besides, I want to be a burden. We all carry hurts, hangups, and habits that we struggle to overcome on our own. But let's face it, if we could do it by ourselves, we would have done it already. Celebrate Recovery offers a safe place to find the support you need to break free. It's confidential, anonymous, and no sign-up is required.
It is amazing what you can learn when you take the time to listen. After 40 years of pastoring, 40 years of listening to people's stories, I have heard some fascinating techniques for overcoming habits in life. One elderly lady who had been married to the same man for over 65 years once boasted about how she helped her husband overcome one of his bad habits. She said, after 65 years, I finally cured my husband of his bad habit of biting his nails. It was simple. I hid his teeth. Do you have a frustrating habit or recurring pattern in your life? Perhaps your issue is a, a bit more serious than biting your nails. Well, today we're concluding a series we've entitled Getting Healed. It's a series that was designed to help people move from hurt to healed, from habit to health. This series was designed to be a source of life and hope, wisdom and truth for those who are struggling and stuck when it comes to recurring issues in their hearts and minds. Now, we've been seeking to accomplish this goal by presenting a simple, practical, biblical three-step pathway. In week one, we learned that the first step to getting healed is getting to the truth. We learned that getting to the truth has to come first because you can't fix what you won't acknowledge. Now, the last time we were together, we unpacked the second step in the journey towards healing. And that second step is getting to the cross. We learned that getting to the cross is essential to the healing journey because it's only at the cross of Jesus Christ where one can find the soul-cleansing forgiveness and the supernatural power that's necessary to fully and finally set people free. Which brings us to today, to the third and final step to getting healed. After you get to the truth and get to the cross, you're then ready to get to the root of things. Now, what do we mean by get to the root? When I was a kid, I'm talking five, six, seven years old, I used to sit and laugh at our neighbor from across the street. The guy across the street, I would watch him out on his lawn. He had a fork and he'd be looking to uproot the weeds in his lawn. And I would say to my friends and my family, hey, look at the guy across the street. How crazy is he? He's out on his hands and knees with a fork on his lawn, uprooting weeds. I thought it was the stupidest thing I'd ever seen. Then, a few weeks ago, it happened. With my AirPods firmly planted in my ears and a screwdriver firmly held in my hands, I found myself scouring my lawn, uprooting any signs of unwanted weeds. And as I was doing this, I suddenly sat up. I suddenly came to the realization, 50 years later, I had become the guy that I once laughed at. After laughing to myself, when I, I came to that realization, I decided I'm okay with it. It's true. I do whatever it takes to uproot every weed that I see on my lawn. I make the effort to uproot the weeds because when you just trim a weed, you're only dealing with the top of the weed, so it only looks like the weed is gone temporarily. In reality, when you just trim a weed, nothing has actually changed. The weed's still there, and in a very short amount of time, it will be just as visible as it was before. If you want to get rid of a weed, you have to pull it up at the roots. Well, when it comes to recurring hurts and habits in our hearts and minds, you and I can be guilty of trimming instead of uprooting. Well, what does it look like to simply trim things in our lives? It looks like focusing solely upon our behavior instead of our beliefs. It looks like focusing solely upon our actions instead of our attitudes. It looked like only medicating our issues instead of addressing the source of our issues. That is what it looks like to trim weeds instead of uproot the weeds in our hearts and minds. Are you seeing the difference? To make sure everyone is grasping what we're talking about, let's adjust the metaphor. Let's switch from the realm of lawn maintenance to the realm of vehicle maintenance. Have you ever found yourself driving a vehicle where the steering wheel is pulling to the one side? There's clearly something wrong with the tires or the alignment. Because in order to keep the vehicle heading straight, you have to keep turning the wheel to the left to compensate for the constant pull to the right. If you didn't keep turning slightly to the left, your vehicle would naturally steer off to the right all on its own. So you have learned to cope with the problem. You've learned to adjust to the damage. Instead of purchasing new tires, instead of correcting the alignment, you choose to daily wrestle with the damage. You are adjusting to the problem 
instead of dealing with the problem. You're trimming the weed instead of getting to the root of the weed. The story is told, the true story, of a pastor who was speaking at a three-day conference in a small church in Panama. At the conclusion of his sermon on the first evening, a woman came forward for prayer. She said, Pastor, I need you to pray that the Lord cleans the cobwebs out of my life. I have so many cobwebs. Could you please pray? So the pastor obliged. He prayed that the Lord would clean the cobwebs out of her life. She thanked him and she went on her way. The next evening, the same woman returned for the second night's gathering. And once again, at the conclusion of the sermon, she came forward and once again, she said, Pastor, could you pray for me? Could you please pray again that the Lord would clean the cobwebs out of my life? Well, the pastor reminded her that he had prayed this very same thing the night before and that the Lord would honor that prayer. But she insisted he pray again. So he did. Father, he prayed, this dear woman is very concerned about the state of her life. Would you please help her clean up her life so she can honor you with it? Please, Lord, clean the cobwebs out of her life. Then came the third and final night of the conference, and sure enough, at the conclusion of that gathering, the same woman got up from her chair, made her way to the front. She said, Pastor, Pastor, please, one last time, can you please pray that the Lord cleans the cobwebs? The pastor stopped her mid-sentence. He said, I will pray for you, but we've been praying the wrong prayer. Then he bowed his head and he prayed this prayer. Father, We do not ask you to clean the cobwebs from this woman's life. In fact, Lord, keep them there for now. Tonight, we ask for something much greater. Tonight, we ask that you kill the spider in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about getting to the root. We're talking about looking past the cobwebs and focusing upon the spider. We all have cobwebs in our lives, don't we? I mean, we all have recurring behaviors, hurts and habits that linger, draining us of mental, emotional, physical, even spiritual strength. We spend so much energy wrestling with these destructive behaviors that we have little energy left to do the things that we know we should be doing in our lives. Now, the answer to this cycle, the key to getting healed in these areas, is to get to the root, to stop wrestling with behaviors and start dealing with their source, to stop trimming the weeds and start getting to the root, to stop cleaning the cobwebs and start killing the spiders. So what do the roots, what do the spiders typically look like in our lives? What are the most common sources of recurring hurts and habits? Well, generally speaking, we can look to two realms. First of all, dysfunction in our body. Dysfunction in our body. As human beings, let me remind you, we are a blend. We are unique hybrids where two distinct realms overlap with one another. As human beings, we are non-physical immaterial souls dwelling within, living through physical material bodies. You are a soul that lives in and through your body. Your immaterial soul interacts with your physical body through your brain. Now, your soul is distinct from your brain. Your soul is not your brain. However, your non-physical soul uses your brain as a link to the physical realm, as a link to the rest of your body. So, your soul impacts your body. However, this is a two-way street. Your body also impacts your soul. Now, if your body has a measure of dysfunction, your soul will be impacted accordingly. Let me say that again. If your body has a measure of dysfunction, your soul will be impacted accordingly. Think in these terms. Just as a musician is affected and limited by the state of the instrument that they've been given, So your soul is affected and limited by the state of the body it's been given. Now, even the greatest keyboard player in the world will struggle to produce music with a piano whose keys get stuck and whose strings are out of tune. In a similar way, there are times in our lives when our struggles may be linked to some frailties and failures in our physical bodies. Our mental reactions, our volatile emotions, our sudden reflexes can sometimes be rooted primarily in our physical bodies. 
That small child who appears to be refusing to calm down or listen to instructions may not actually be displaying a rebellious reaction to authority. Instead, that small child may be having an allergic reaction to their environment. They may be physically reacting to something that they've eaten, something that has triggered a rush of chemicals within them, something that is entirely beyond their control. You see, as creatures that are a combination of body and soul, it's not always easy to diagnose the root of a behavior. We see this dynamic when it comes to a person's experience with depression. More and more researchers are recognizing how the roots of depression can be complex, with root causes varying from person to person, situation to situation. Now, among the many possible causes, there are compelling studies that link genetics and brain chemistry to the experience of depression for some. What we're saying is this. When it comes to destructive patterns in our lives, the root, the spider, may be something that is sourced in the physical realm. Dysfunction in your body is a legitimate option when you're trying to get to the root of the issues in your life. Think of the prophet Elijah. There was a moment in his life when he was so stressed and so depressed that he begged for God to end his life. Scripture says, Elijah came to a broom bush. He sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under the bush and he fell asleep. And how did God respond to this crisis in Elijah's life? What did God see as a root in Elijah's heart and mind at that moment? Well, keep reading. All at once, an angel touched him and said, you're demon possessed. No, that's not what he said. The angel said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. Elijah ate and drank and then he lay down again. The guy was exhausted. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Now, God appears to tie Elijah's behavior to a measure of dysfunction in Elijah's body. Elijah was physically run down, so Elijah was mentally and emotionally and perhaps spiritually run down as well. Elijah's body was negatively impacting his soul. God showed Elijah that getting to the root can sometimes be as simple as paying attention to your body. Think of the advice that the Apostle Paul, a first century leader, gave to a young pastor named Timothy. Timothy was struggling with some kind of recurring issue, and Paul suggested a possible way forward. Paul said, and I quote directly, Stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. Paul was telling Timothy that getting to the root can sometimes be as simple as paying attention to your body. Think of the advice that Jesus gave to his disciples in the midst of their hectic schedule. The Bible says the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they didn't even have a chance to eat, Jesus said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Jesus was telling them that getting to the root can sometimes be as simple as paying attention to your body. What do the roots, what do the spiders typically look like in our lives? What are the common sources of hurts and habits in our lives? Generally speaking, one common root, one common source can be some form of dysfunction in our body. Another common root, another typical spider might be lies from our past. Lies from our past. It's been my professional observation and my personal experience that the most common source of destructive behavior are lies. Lies that are linked to our past. Lies that are tied to past events in our life. Lies that were formed from something that we did or something that was done to us. Something that we witnessed or something that we heard. Some event that took place in our past and it is negatively impacting our life in the present. Now, having said that, 
here's where things get a bit cloudy. I've come to realize that it's rarely the actual event from our past that is the actual root of our problem. It's rarely the actual event that is the spider. I've come to realize that it is often a lie that has somehow become attached to that event in our past that is the source of our problem. I've come to realize that what we have learned to tell ourselves about a past event often sits as the root of our problem. What we have learned to tell ourselves about a past event often sits as the root of our problem. You see, what we've learned to tell ourselves about the event becomes so strong within us that when we think back to that event, it's no longer the actual event that we're seeing. What we've learned to tell ourselves about the event becomes so strong within us that we now view that past event through a filter, a lens that we have added. A filter, a lens that does not actually represent the truth, but a filter, a lens that clouds and colors the truth. Let me show you how this often works. Chuck Swindoll is a well-known pastor and Bible teacher. Well, years ago, Chuck was invited to speak daily at a week-long conference. As he tells the story, Chuck couldn't help but notice a couple sitting directly in front of him, front row center. They were sitting in that same spot every time he spoke. And there was something about that couple that was driving Chuck crazy. Every time he spoke, the husband fell asleep while the wife took copious notes. Every single time. She would be attentive while he would be sound asleep. This really started to bother Chuck. He started to feel anger towards the husband and pity towards the wife. Here was this godly woman trying to grow in her faith and in her knowledge of God. And here was her deadbeat husband dragging her down, showing no respect for Chuck and no respect for his wife. No respect for God. Well, as the week wore on and as Chuck's patience wore thin, he decided that he was going to say something to that insensitive and rude man. So, at the conclusion of his final teaching, Chuck stepped down from the platform and he approached the couple. Before Chuck could say a word, the wife stood up and with tears in her eyes thanked Chuck for his ministry. She said, Pastor Swindoll, you have no idea what a joy it has been for us to be here this week. You see, my husband admires you greatly. He watches you on TV. He listens to every one of your podcasts. He's in the late stages of a terminal disease. But when he heard that you were going to be teaching near us, my husband insisted that we be here every service. He's too weak to take notes himself. So he assigned me the role of taking down everything you said. And in that moment, everything changed. Chuck Swindoll was seeing a very real event. He was seeing a man sleeping through his sermons, and he was seeing a woman taking copious notes. What Chuck Swindoll was seeing was real. However, the story that Chuck Swindoll was telling himself about the very real event he was seeing was a complete lie. And that lie was coloring, clouding, and polluting his heart and his mind. So what was the source of Chuck's problem? It wasn't the actual event. The source of his problem was the lie he was telling himself, the lie that he had attached to the event. What Chuck Swindoll was telling himself about the event was the root of his problem. It's been my observation and my experience in life that we do what Chuck did. It's been my observation and my personal experience in life that the most common source of destructive behaviors in our lives are the lies that are linked to our past. And as difficult as that is, this whole dynamic gets even trickier. Because when it comes to dealing with lies from our past, we don't know we're believing lies. The challenge in dealing with the lies in our life is we don't know that they are lies. Who walks around in life consciously knowing that they're believing a lie? People don't say, I am deceived. People say, I was deceived. But we don't know we're presently being deceived. You see, our biggest challenge when it comes to believing lies from our past is recognizing them as lies that have become embedded and hidden in our hearts. 
This is the power, by the way, of ministries at Broadway like Celebrate Recovery. A ministry that's devoted to helping people see the truth. A ministry that is filled with trusted friends and based on skilled voices and the word of God and the spirit of God where you can gather with other people and they can help you face the truth and respond to the truth and get to the root. This is the strength of ministries at Broadway like our Genesis Change Groups. I went through the Genesis process years ago and it helped me immensely because it helped me to recognize and realize there was a whole bunch of lies I was believing. One of the stages of the Genesis process is they list like around 30 lies people typically believe and you have to prayerfully go through that list and see how many that you're believing. Well, when I went through that Genesis booklet and it lists several typical lies that we begin to tell ourselves as a response to our events in the past, I realized I was believing some. Lies such as no one can be trusted or if I'm not in control, something bad will happen or I am worthless or asking for help is a sign of weakness. Lies, all of them. And once I came to the realization that I had some of these lies within me, I knew I had work to do. I had to take an inward look. I had to take an honest inventory of my inner dialogue, of my self-talk, of my subconscious beliefs. How do you do that? Well, using the four corrective lenses we learned in week one of this series, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, trusted friends, skilled voices. I had to face the truth about what was going on inside of me. I then had to take all of that confusion to the cross to receive forgiveness from God, to release forgiveness towards others, and to experience the supernatural power of his presence. I then had to use that supernatural power to do the work of uprooting those lies, the work of not just resisting their pull on the steering wheel of my life, but the work of repairing the damage they had done in my life. Lies. It's the only weapon the enemy has against a follower of Jesus. The enemy has no power over us in the legal realm. We have confessed our sins and acknowledged our guilt before the judge of the universe. And that judge has cleansed and forgiven us through the saving work of Jesus Christ. That's why the biblical writer declared, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's why the biblical writer proclaimed, if God is for us, who can be against us? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It's God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, he's at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. The enemy has no power over us in the legal realm. The enemy has no power over us in the spiritual realm. We are indwelt and empowered by the very presence of God as followers of Jesus. That's why the biblical writer declared, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor demons, neither this present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, or anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The only weapon that the enemy has in the life of a follower of Jesus is the power of the lie. Only if the enemy can get us to believe a lie can he do damage to us. I want you to notice something. Writing to Christ followers in the ancient city of Ephesus, the Apostle Paul used the metaphor of putting on spiritual armor when it comes to our interaction with the evil one. Now, in that letter, Paul wrote, he said, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Let's stop right there. Do you see the word schemes? This letter in the Bible was originally written in ancient Greek, and schemes is a translation of the ancient Greek word methodii. It's the ancient Greek word for craftiness, for deceit. Paul is telling us that the chief weapon the enemy uses is deceit. It's lies. And Paul goes on to tell us how to withstand the lies of the enemy. 
Paul says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, against against the devil's lies. Look at the first piece of spiritual armor that Paul recommends. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. The first line of defense against lies is obviously the truth. The first line of defense against deceit is to know and live the truth. And following Jesus is all about living according to the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Describing what it will be like to have the Spirit of God dwelling within us, Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. One of the keys to getting healed from destructive patterns in our lives is getting to the root. To stop wrestling with behaviors and start dealing with the source. To stop trimming the weeds and to start getting to the root. To stop cleaning out the cobwebs and to start killing the spiders. Which brings us to today's big idea when it comes to getting healed. If you want to stop the fruit of a lie, you have to get to the root of the lie. If you want to stop the fruit of a lie, you have to get to the root of the lie. If you only focus upon the behaviors in your life, you'll only trim the surface of your life. It's only when you're willing to get to the root that the deepest healing will occur. So the choice is yours. You can continually trim the weeds or you can finally uproot the weeds. You can constantly clear the cobwebs or you can kill the spider. If you want to stop the fruit of a lie, you have to get to the root of the lie. Well, today we've been investigating how we can get to that root. And in doing so, we've highlighted two common roots, two common spiders, dysfunction in our body and lies from our past. Know this, getting to the root in our lives is not something we can do on our own. Now, don't get me wrong. It begins with a decision that only we can make. However, once we've made that decision, it's a journey that we don't take on our own. The healing journey is not a solo journey. The pathway to healing is a pathway that we walk with others, with the indwelling Spirit of God, with trusted friends, with skilled voices, with godly men and women who know the Word and walk in the Spirit of God. That's why we have all of these ministries at Broadway Church for you to access. Are you ready to get healed? The pathway is clear. Face the truth. Get to the cross. Get to the root. Let's pray. Spirit of God, thank you for the work that you do in our lives. Thank you that you love us so much. You are so patient with us that you reveal the truth in our lives. You help us to face the truth. You bring us to the cross and you fill us with your spirit and your strength. And then you help us to get to the root of things in our lives, to see the truth and to deal with the lies in our lives. So continue to bring healing into the hearts and lives of people who are watching me right now, I pray. I pray that you will help people, give people the wisdom to know the next step in their journey. Maybe you're watching me right now and you're not yet a follower of Jesus. That means that you are presently separated from the presence of God. You are presently living a lie. You're presently detached from the the God who created you and knows you and loves you and wants to bring healing to you. If you want to move from being separated from God to being in relationship with God for all eternity, if you want to move from hiding your sins and failures to having your sins and failures forgiven and cleansed, then I invite you to pray with me right now. God, I acknowledge my failure. I acknowledge my rebellion. I acknowledge the hurts and the habits and the shame and the guilt that I have in my life. I don't want to live under this weight any longer. I come to you and I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me based on the work that Jesus did on my behalf through his death and resurrection. I don't claim to understand it all, but I declare that I choose to trust you. What I do know, I choose to trust you. So would you come and live within me by your spirit? Begin to change and heal and transform me. Take me on that journey of healing in my life. And God, would you give me the courage to tell somebody about this decision, even before my head hits the pillow tonight? 
I pray this by the authority of the resurrected Jesus. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me for the first time, congratulations. The best advice I can give you is, as I just prayed, to tell somebody. Tell someone who you know to be a follower of Jesus. Maybe someone who has brought you to church in the past. Or, if you'd like to, you can email the address on the screen right now. And one of our pastoral staff will, will respond to your email and help you take the next step. Now, don't worry, we're not tricking you. We're not going to spam you. We're not going to put you on a mailing list. We'll simply offer our services to you in any way that we can. God bless you. Thank you for being with us at Broadway Church today. Hope to see you again here at Broadway Church Online. Thank you for joining us at Church Online this week. If you have any prayer needs or requests, or if you're new to Broadway and you're looking to connect deeper, please scan the QR code on the screen and a pastor will reply to you and help you get connected. We want you to keep growing as you learn more about Jesus. Now, stick around just a little longer as we transition into a time of communion. I've spent the last few months in a new role here at Broadway. I am now the Surrey Campus Pastor. And when I started working as a Surrey campus pastor, one of the first things I noticed was just being in Surrey more, people are a little bit different than they are in Vancouver. There's just a different type of person and not better or worse, just, just a little bit different. And, and I think I got a little bit in my head about that. I started thinking, oh God, what do you need me to be to minister to these people that was different than when I worked in Vancouver? How, how do I need to be different? And the Lord kind of drew me back uh, through uh, being in my step journal and reading in Galatians chapter three, where it says, there's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all Christians. You are one in Christ Jesus. And it reminded me that, you know, the Bible talks about because of Christ, those differentiations that we put in place don't matter. And then I began to realize that Everyone needs love. Everyone needs to believe that someone cares about them. Everyone needs to worship God. Everyone needs to experience and express the purest love imaginable. Everyone needs to know about the cross. And that is what we are remembering today. So this piece of bread, it's a symbol of Christ's broken body for us. As you take it, remember what he has done for you through his broken body. Let's take the bread together. In this cup, it's, a, it's the new covenant sealed in the blood of Jesus. Those are Christ's words. This remem reminds us that the old covenant has been fulfilled in Jesus. And because he shed his blood, everything is different. Let's drink this cup together with thanks. God, thank you that because of the cross, you draw, you draw us together. We are in unity. We are the different the differences we have in life are, are covered by the fact that we all need your forgiveness. We all need to follow the teachings of Jesus. We all need what you did for us on the cross. Remembering that again this month as we take communion reminds us that we are one. And as we follow you, Lord God, I pray that you would continue to call us to greater heights and greater depths in you, to know you deeper and to serve you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us at Church Online this week. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Desiree and I'm one of the pastors here. And as you guys can see, I have a very special guest with me. So why don't you go ahead and tell us who you are and what you do around here? Yeah, my name is Tyrone uh, and I am the youth pastor here at Broadway in Vancouver. Amazing. Well, we have a ton of stuff happening here at Broadway for you and your families. So why don't you check these things out? Monday, September 30th is the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. On this day, we encourage everyone to pray for the Indigenous communities across our land, for truth to be seen by the light of God's love and for healing to be experienced by the power of God's grace. We have our Young Adult Kickoff happening at the Vancouver campus this Thursday at 7 p.m. 
If your age is 18 to 35, you are invited. We have intentional small groups for each age, including a new young married small group. We also have regular young adult small groups at our Port Coquitlam and Surrey campuses on the second and the fourth Fridays of the month at our Poco campus, and you are invited. We have a Parents with Children Stay and Play group happening at both our Vancouver and Port Coquitlam campuses on Thursday mornings. In Poco, it happens from 10 to 11 a.m. And in Vancouver, it happens from 10 to noon. You are invited. Club Freedom Tri-Cities is looking for volunteers. Each Sunday, we serve a hot meal and bring a message of hope to those in need in the Tri-Cities community. There are a variety of ways to serve, so if you're interested, please email the address below or sign up on the City Reach website. Hey Surrey Campus, join us as we head to the Rondrizo Farm and Pumpkin Patch on October 6th from 1.30 onwards. There will be cows, chickens, and pumpkins to pick. To register, go please visit our website. If you missed anything that we said, you can always visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on all of our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.